Hi, I'm Chris Sangster, and welcome back to the studio. Today I want to examine the different ways we can convert an audio region into a MIDI region in Logic Pro. And we're going to look at this through the lens of starting a new song idea. I'm a singer first, a guitar player second, and a keyboard player third. So it's not always super efficient for me to get the musical ideas from inside my head into Logic Pro just by playing them in on a MIDI keyboard. That often takes a lot of guesswork and figuring out the part first, when all I want to do is sing the part directly into Logic and have the MIDI created for me. Luckily, this is possible in Logic Pro. I've got a melody in my head, so let's create a new project, and in the Choose a Project window, we can go to New Project and use the Tap Tempo button to set the project tempo to what I'm feeling for the melody. Looks like it's around 76 BPM. Let's go with that. Now we will create one audio track and set the input to my microphone. Then I'll start by hitting record and just singing in the melody that's in my head along with the click track. To turn this audio recording into a MIDI part that we can play back with the software instrument, we're going to use Flex Pitch. Double click on the audio region, turn on Flex Time, and then in the Flex menu, choose Flex Pitch. Now, before converting this to a MIDI region, I think it's best to clean up the performance in Flex Pitch first. I find snapping everything to perfect pitch and then double checking that all the notes are tuned correctly helps the MIDI come out more accurately. I also like to join together any two flex blocks that are supposed to be one note. Because of how I slid up into this note, flex time broke it into two blocks, but in the MIDI performance, I just want one note here. So I'll select these two and use the join tool to join them together into one note. After we finish tweaking the flex pitch blocks, we then come up to the edit menu and choose create MIDI track from flex pitch data. And then Logic automatically creates a new software instrument track with our new MIDI region that follows the melody I sang in. By default, it loads the stock alchemy patch. which actually sounds really cool on this melody. I wasn't planning on that, but I'm gonna leave it, and then I'll double it with what my original thought for a software instrument was. And that is this awesome new contact instrument I just got called Quartarone Guitar Reveries. It's by Variant Samples and was created by capturing the guitar sounds of Claudio Quartarone. It has a ton of awesome guitar sounds and also some more experimental sounds like keyboard parts created from his guitar playing. But for this tune, I'm just gonna go with this guitar patch called Vibrato Twang because I want a little bit of that Western guitar feel. Now, oftentimes when converting audio to MIDI like this, you will have to tweak the velocity after the fact. I find unless you record super, super loud, the MIDI always comes out at a really low velocity. And that's also the case here. So I'm just gonna select all of the MIDI notes and use the velocity slider to increase the velocity for this guitar part. Next up is drums. I'm feeling a very simple four on the floor kick drum pattern, which obviously would be no problem to program in, but let's record me beatboxing the pattern and then convert that to MIDI using a different method in Logic Pro, one that is tailored to drums, not melodies like flex pitches. After recording the part, we're going to go to the track menu and then come down and select replace or double drum track. In the menu that comes up, we want to select kick as our instrument and replacement as our mode. This will mute the original track. 
Then if we double click on the audio region to bring up the audio file editor, we can then use this slider to fine tune the transient points that will be the start of each new MIDI note. They are denoted by these dashed gray lines in the audio track editor. Move the slider until there is one marker per kick hit. I generally leave the trigger note on auto because most plugins will put the kick on C1 and that's also the default in Logic. But you can choose a different note from the menu if you want or you can choose to include some timing offset if you want the start of the MIDI note slightly offset from the transient marker. Click OK and we now have our new MIDI kick drum. For these, I'm gonna quantize them all and then snap all of the velocities to the same value by selecting all of the MIDI blocks and then holding Option on my keyboard and then clicking and dragging the velocity slider. But I don't like this default kick drum sound at all. Let's change the plugin to drum synth and go for heavy kick. Now let's do the same process to add the snare drum. After recording the part, we can use the keyboard shortcut Control D this time to bring up the drum doubling and replacement menu. And the only difference here is that we're going to change the instrument to snare. And again, I don't really like the stock snare sound, so let's change it. When doing this audio to MIDI method of producing, I like to use the way I sing or beatbox the part as a guide for picking my sounds. The way I recorded the audio version of the snare makes me think more of a dark clap sound than a full on snare. So let's create one of those. Also when working like this, I like to work fast. If I have something in my head, I want to get it down and move on. Spending a bunch of time searching for samples kills all of that creativity for me. So I will just select the first closest thing I can find and then stack some plugins quickly to get the sound in the ballpark of what I was thinking. I'm not afraid to throw a reverb right on a track instead of an aux track during this process. I just want to get my ideas down as quickly as possible and then I can worry about fine tuning the sound design later once all the ideas are out of my head. Let's add the hi-hat in the same method. Just going to select the best bar of what I recorded and then I'll loop it once we convert to MIDI. In the drum replacement menu, select other as the instrument this time and then change the trigger note to be a closed hi-hat. The drum synth hi-hat's a little bland though. I'm actually feeling a completely washed out hi-hat sound so it gets a bit more of a percussion vibe. Let's add some phasing and then throw the little plate plugin on this track with the mix knob set to 100% wet. A note here about the drum doubling and replacement method. This by far works best on individual drum tracks, whether by replacing your beatboxing or doubling an actual drum kit recording. It does not work nearly as well on drum loops. You certainly can use it to replace or double a drum loop, but the MIDI is going to require a lot of fine tuning work after the fact to match it up to the loop exactly. All right, we've got our main melody and our basic drum pattern. Now let's add some bass. Again, I'm gonna sing it in and use the flex pitch to MIDI method to make it into a software instrument track. Do, 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 do. But with bass, you may have to drop the MIDI an octave after the fact like I did here, unless you have a super low singing voice. Now I want to add a higher melody. To do this, let's look at another option for converting audio to MIDI. And I'm going to record this melody on my guitar. I sometimes like to record melodies that will be played on other instruments on guitar first because I write differently on a guitar than I do on a keyboard. This can lead to some interesting sounding results. The reason we need 
need a different method of converting audio to MIDI for this part is because of what I did right at the end here. I played a chord and we will see if we try to use flex pitch on this track, it doesn't know what to do with the chord. Flex pitch is designed for monophonic sources like vocals. So we have to turn to a third party plugin to properly detect the separate notes of the chord. And that plugin is Melodyne. We will put Melodyne on the track and then capture the recording. Because this part is mostly monophonic, Melodyne has detected it with its melodic algorithm, but we can come up to the algorithm menu and change it to polyphonic sustain. And when we do, you see we now have the four notes of the chord broken out. Now we can come to the settings menu inside of the Melodyne plugin and choose save as MIDI. Then save the MIDI file to your hard drive and then drag and drop it back into the session on a new software instrument track. And when using Melodyne to convert audio to MIDI, I find it a bit easier to make any edits that are necessary after the fact to the MIDI blocks. I just find it slightly easier than editing the blobs inside of Melodyne. And for this one, I'm gonna try to make a crazy distorted synth lead. Let's start with something from the UVI workstation. A scream solo sounds pretty cool. Good start, but we aren't getting the chord played out we have to change the synth into polyphonic mode as well. Next, I'm gonna force legato in the MIDI blocks, and I'll do this by selecting them all and then pressing shift backslash. This way the notes all sustain until the following note starts. And to finish it off, let's add this crazy effect from FabFilter Saturn 2 called Chaotic Layer. All right, now we're cooking. Time to make a new section. Let's continue just the kick, snare, and bass over, and then use a slightly different audio to MIDI technique, one that involves sampling my voice. I'm just gonna record myself singing one note that is one bar long. Then I'm gonna put some aggressive pitch correction on it so that the note stays perfectly in tune, but also has a bit more of a robotic sound to it. Then I will bounce this region in place. Then I'll take the new bounced region and click and drag it to the blank space below the last track header in the session. Then I'm gonna drop it into Sample Alchemy. Sample Alchemy creates a playable instrument of my vocal sample it automatically detects the correct pitch and maps it all out so that I can play it as an instrument on my MIDI keyboard. I'm gonna change the sampling type to spectral and add a bit of low pass filtering and then play in some chords to be a pad sound in this new song section. Let's tidy up the MIDI after recording and a little chroma verb on the bloom setting never hurt anyone either. Great, now we have a unique instrument sound created with my voice to anchor this new song section. There's one last sampling technique I wanna use in this song and that is resampling a drum loop. I really like the tones of this drum loop, but it's way too fast to use as is in this song. So I'm gonna drag the file under the last track in the session, and this time I will choose Quick Sampler Original. The optimized version automatically adjusts tuning and loudness, and we don't want that in this case. The original version will automatically slice the loop into playable segments, but it won't change the sound at all. And as you can see, we have a bunch of different slices of the loop that we can play with individual keys on our MIDI keyboard. What I like to do is go through and find a couple good kicks, a good snare, and a good hi-hat that are as separated from each other as possible. You may have to move around the edit points with these yellow lines or change the fade length here to fine tune each sample hit. Here are the three best hits I found. Kick, snare, hat. Now I'm just gonna record in a very basic pattern with these samples during the second half of this song section. I 
like that okay, but it's pretty boring. Let's spice it up with Beat Breaker. Now we've got something much more unique to add interest to this song section. All right, now I've got all my ideas down and it's time to do some arranging. All right, let's check out how far we've come. start to a new song idea and it's already sounding unique and original because we use these audio to MIDI methods instead of just dropping in samples or only using the MIDI keyboard. It's important to think about how your production techniques will influence the final outcome of the song. If you want something a little more unique and out there sounding, try starting with some non-traditional production techniques. I hope you found these techniques interesting and useful. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. I would be happy to answer them. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the studio next time. Thanks.